Now, even if, I want to point out though, even if you're lifting weights, if you are getting insufficient protein, it's gonna, you're gonna leach some muscle. So you, you need to still take in sufficient protein. And there's actually evidence that uh, you need more protein than uh, what has been shown for people at maintenance or above to maintain uh, muscle or even to gain it slightly when you're in a caloric deficit. So that actually increases protein needs to some extent. Can you talk about like what those yeah, sure. requirements so, are? This, we start to get into generalizations. So the general uh, literature sh shows somewhere around 1.6 to 1.8 grams per kilogram uh, per day of protein is required for resistance trained people, which is about double the RDA. So RDA for sedentary individuals is around 0.8 grams per kilograms per day, per kilogram per day. Um, you need roughly double that to you know, to uh, maintain or to promote anabolism while you're uh, resistance training. Uh, in the upper confidence interval is about 2.2 grams per kilogram. Uh, so meaning that to really be on the safe side, if you're, for the vast majority of people, if you're in the gen pop, it's probably not going to make a difference. But if you're a bodybuilder, when I'm uh, coaching bodybuilders and uh, consulting with them, it really does not hurt to take in more protein. I mean, there's a lot of myths about kidney damage and healthy individuals, no good evidence that there's any negative effects on renal function, certainly on bone density. These are all uh, unsupported um, from my reading of the literature. Um, so there's not necessarily a downside to it. You have to look at cost benefit. Everything is cost benefit. For bodybuilders, I would say go up to two grams per kilogram per day, which roughly around for those of us in the States, it's about a gram per pound, it's not gonna hurt. But I would say that becomes even more important to stay in that upper realm. So if you're like 1.6, if you're especially in a surplus, you generally need, the needs for protein are gonna be encompassed because the body isn't gonna leach protein needs. When you start getting into a deficit, that's where I think it becomes even more important to uh, be at that upper realm, that uh, 2.0, 2.2 grams per kilogram. So people that are, let's say people that are obese, and I always say obese or overweight, and maybe it's important to distinguish these two based yeah. on what you just said, but if they are obese and or like, you know, overweight, um, and they're wanting to lose fat mass, right? Uh, should they be calculating their protein intake based on their targeted weight? Or because if they're like, you know, 300 pounds, for example, or, you know, that's a lot of protein. Right? Yeah, so. it's, a, it's a great question and the answer is no. So the protein needs have been based on men and women who are relatively lean. I want to say relatively for the vast majority of the population, they would consider it lean. So for guys, somewhere like in the 12 to 15% body fat range, for women around 20% body fat or so. Um, so if you are 300 pounds and you should be 200 pounds, you would want, let's say you would calculate it at your, uh, the weight that you would be where you would be at your lean weight, where, you know, for a guy, 12 to 15% body fat. So we can then regress to saying, uh, base it on lean mass, but most people aren't getting DEXA scans to determine their lean mass, or even, you know, they're not going out and getting body fat caliper uh, measurements, just not in the realm of what most people are gonna do. And you can make a general estimate. These are not precise measurements, it's not like, you know, people think that we're doing these experiments and they really nail it down into these precise areas. They're generalized recommendations based upon what we know, and there's going to be variations around the mean. You're always going to have people that are, when we uh, do research, we report the means, as you well know, which are the averages. But people aren't an average. You get some people that are up here, some people here, and they average out to here. So, um, yeah, so if you're uh, overweight, obese, you want to figure your protein needs at what you would be at a relatively lean weight. You know, let's say, for, again, for a guy, 10, 12, 15% body fat. I will say this, it doesn't hurt to take in, like I said, a little extra protein. That's, on the good side, uh, protein is very difficult to store as body fat, much more difficult than uh, carbohydrates and fat. So it's... Um, if you're going to err on the side of uh, caution, that's where you'd want to err on the side of incre you know, taking in a little more protein at the expense, if your goal is weight loss, at the expense of carbs and fat. 
Right. Um, now we had um, Stuart Phillips on the podcast, a, a co colleague of yours, yeah, and um, he was talking about with the with the protein requirements, like the buy-in being more like, you know, just to get like at least 1.2 grams of uh, protein per, per kilogram body weight. And for me, I was like, okay, because that that that's what I'm going to try to aim for. But then. As I started to become more, um, do more resistance training, I realized I was meeting the buy-in, but I wasn't meeting the 1.6. And so I have to now increase, like a can of sardines will get me there. Like I need about 16 to 20 more grams a day. Um, so, you know, for, for people like, I'm, like my dad, for example, he's in his 70s and um, like getting, good luck getting him to 1.6. <laughs> like I'm trying to get him to 1.2, right? I'm trying to like prevent him from, like just you know, completely depleting his you know his amino acids from his pro from his muscle every day, which he's kind of doing. Um, so he has to supplement and do the protein protein shakes and stuff like that. Um, and I'm happy at least to get him there. Um, next step would be then 1.6, you know, and of course adding the resistance training, which should be essential. But I haven't been able to get to that point yet. Um, so I wanted to mention that with the protein requirements because you know the there was like I know the RDA is so low 0 0.8 and um, Stuart talked a little bit about like some of the the flaws in the early studies that were done to calculate that and yeah. I'm just like wondering when is it time to reassess this you know and and change it because a lot of people think they're they're getting enough protein and um, many people don't even get the RDA. So to address that, uh, two things I think that are important. So 1.2 is better than 0 0.8, certainly. But I mean, there's good literature showing, we've done work on this, that if you want to maximize anabolism, so again, it doesn't mean that you're not going to gain any muscle if you're taking in 1.2, but it w will impair the gains that you're going to get, and especially when you're talking about older individuals, where that they're anabolically resistant. Uh, so it becomes even more important. And I think this is another important thing. When you're dealing with older individuals, their resistance, uh, not only anabolic resistance to resistance training, but also to protein, where the per dose uh, aspects need to be higher to some extent to get what's called leucine, which is one of the essential amino acids. And there's, I don't know how deep you want to get here, yeah. but there's a leucine, leucine threshold. Leucine is the amino acid that seems to kickstart the muscle growth process. And um, if it seems to be somewhat higher, at least some of the literature does show that in older individuals, getting more leucine is important to kickstart that process. As you point out, though, and fairly, for older individuals, it becomes increasingly difficult to get uh, protein in. And I'm a big fan of whole foods. Like I, Supplementation is something that you do when you cannot get whole foods in. But as you get older, taste buds start to... Uh, dissipate, your, your food does not have good taste. So older individuals have difficulty chewing sometimes too. And that is where supplementation can come in. It, it's much easier to drink a whey protein or a casein or egg protein shake and get that protein in uh, through supplemental means if you're not meeting your daily requirements. So I think that's where, um, and for anyone, I mean women, it, it seems that women often also uh, are not programmed to take protein as much. And uh, yeah, it's just very easy to do through protein shakes if you're not going to be able to do it through whole foods. What's the leucine threshold? Like, can you, um, like, in terms of protein, like, obviously, um, we'll get, we can get into the vegan, vegetarian, because that's a mm -hmm. whole other thing. But like, if you're eating meat, chicken, poultry, fish, you know, if you're getting the essential amino acids, like, what gram dose per meal? would you say would be important for that crossing that leucine threshold and what age? Yeah, so it's, these aren't again hard cutoffs in either of those. I've seen uh, three grams uh, where it starts to increase from two to three grams of leucine uh, as you get older. Where is that cutoff from being quote unquote older? There isn't one. Uh, and if you don't necessarily, I certainly don't think you need to take leucine as a supplement if you're taking in a high quality protein. Uh, source, um, you know, you're, if you're eating meat-based proteins, which, by the way, aren't just meat, they're also milk and eggs, etc. So proteins from animal, I should say animal-based sources. Um, you're going to be getting quality proteins that are rich in, in leucine. And uh, again, it's just getting the proper dosages in, which might be, 
It's been shown there is a graded, um, there's a recent study out of uh, Luke Van Loon's lab, who's a terrific researcher, protein researcher in the Netherlands. And uh, they looked at, again, my memory now, it's been a while since I looked at this study, but it was, they did zero, 15 grams of protein, I believe they used whey, uh, 30 and 45, I think it was. But anyway, it showed a dose response relationship for muscle protein synthesis where they kept getting a greater response. Now, it did seem to somewhat, cur the uh, curve wasn't, it wasn't a linear uh, relationship. So there was, you know, more parabolic where it started to uh, trail off after 30 grams, but it did continue on above the 30 grams. So uh, it just shows that in older individuals that uh, it's needed to take more per dose protein to hit that leucine threshold, particularly in the time after resistance training. I mean, yeah, that's talking about a dose that you're, you're, you're gonna have in your animal products, but then you're also probably gonna have a protein shake with it because it's quite, I mean, I guess unless you can eat large, large, large steaks and stuff. But um, for me, I know as a female too, um, well, I, I mean, won't four be getting... ounces of chicken is 30 grams of protein. Is it 30? So. So, yeah, okay. I mean, it's four, you know, if you get... I eat four ounces so, of chicken. Yeah, yeah, so it's... Pretty good.